you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman, a channel of satire, comedy, and entertainment, and basically me just calling it the way I see it. Now, if you like what you see, consider hitting the like and subscribe button. You don't have to. But if you don't like what you see, be sure to leave a comment down below and tell me what you didn't like, so I can then take that comment and make a funny video about what you said. So in one of my videos about Robin Bullock, uh, one of the uh, <clears throat> commenters named John Watkins wrote, do you think maybe you can look into Kent Christmas sometimes? I haven't found anything on him, but like you said, he does collaborate with several false prophets. So that makes me wonder, you know, birds of a feather flock together. <clears throat> so I've heard of Kent Christmas, um, and I've heard other people say he's a false prophet, but I've never looked into him myself. I've heard Timothy Dixon quote his name a lot. And uh, John, I want to thank you because now that I looked into Kent Christmas, I now understand Timothy Dixon a lot better. So Kent Christmas has been in ministry for like 50 years since he was like 17 is what my research pulled up. And I said that now I understand Timothy Dixon a lot better because a lot of the mannerisms that Kent Christmas does, I see Timothy Dixon duplicating. Uh, a lot of the way things are said, what is said, it seems like Christmas, Dixon, and Bullock are kind of like this triangle of, of false prophets that feed off each other, say the same things. <clears throat> now they would say, uh, well, that's God speaking through us and God is the same. So he's speaking through all three of us. Uh, but no, because I think I've already established that uh, Timothy Dixon is not hearing from God. He's hearing a thought in his mind, which is his flesh or in his heart. Okay, which is one of the most deceitful things the Bible says is the heart. Um, and he thinks that's what God is saying. Or maybe he's supposed to speak these things into existence as the NAR preaches. Um, but basically, this is not the Lord speaking. And we're going to review a video of Kent Christmas. And look, I, I grew up in Pentecostal. I heard people giving so-called messages most of my adult life okay um, I'm no longer with the assemblies of God but <clears throat> I've heard a lot of messages from the Lord and I could I got to where I could tell man that guy's in the flesh or you know that person's in the flesh or hey maybe I ought to really pay attention is this is this really real uh, you know there's a lot of a debate on on tongues and messages and all that stuff but anyway I don't want to debate that there's a lot more you know, people out there who, who do a better job at that. We're going to look at this video from Kent Christmas, and it's a 2018 prophecy. One thing I need to make clear, uh, when you see the videos that I do jump, I am editing like dead space out of there or something that's really not my subject, okay? So it flows in chronological order, but there will be things removed especially stalls and coughs and things like that. Even in my own videos, you'll see me jump around where I'll think about something and I'll forget what I'm thinking or don't really know how to say it and then I'll cut that out. So that's what I do in all my videos, but it flows in chronological order. So when you see things jump, he may be rambling on about something that has nothing to do with this video as far as I'm concerned. So I will cut that out. The content is true. But what is being, what is done is what I hear people call compressing for time. And that is taking out little sections where the time is just eaten up. So that's why you see my, my videos kind of jump and, and the frames don't exactly match up. God said, release this word of the Lord to this house tonight. This prophecy tonight is going to deal with the nation. It's going to deal with the lukewarm. It's going to deal with the righteous. And it's going to deal with the wicked. The Lord says that I am now taking hold of the reins of the nations in the earth and of my body and the church. The season of men being in charge is over. Okay, folks, right out of the gate, he says that this message says, 
that the Lord is now going to take the reins of the nations and the church and that the time of man being in control is over. Um, well, that's a surprise to me. I, uh, I didn't know that the Lord uh, gave up anything. Um, that he was no longer in command of the nations. That he was no longer in command of the church. That he had turned all that over to man. Uh, there's some theological questions that I have. Uh, if God is not in control, well, all these prophets who've been saying God's in control of your life, God's in control, God's handling this, God's doing this, uh, were you guys all wrong? This seems to be news to me that all of a sudden God is saying, hey, uh, I know I gave you guys for like 2,000 years control over everything, but I, now in this hour, I'm taking control back. I'm going to run the show. I have a problem with this. And I am now going to perform my word of my prophets that they have declared for generations. Folks, if you're not careful, you would have just missed a huge, huge problem in what Christmas Dixon and Bullock do. Listen to what the man said. And I am now going to perform my word of my prophets that they have declared for generations. Did you catch it? He didn't say, I am now going to carry out with the words that I have spoken through my prophets for generations. He said, I am going to start doing what the prophets declared. See, this is what I think is going on. I think that this whole new apostolic reformation believes they are supposed to speak things into existence. You know, they, they depend on this whole thing about there's life and death in the tongue, which is a total uh, misuse of the verse. They think that they speak it and God is obligated to fulfill it. He did not say that God was going to fulfill the words God said through the prophets. He said he was going to fulfill the things his prophets declared. That's an NAR buzzword, declare, activate. Destiny. Anytime you hear those words, you better perk up and know you're listening to NAR. Very telling. Very telling and very troubling. My people have run after preachers and prophets who have lied to them and said it's all right to be lukewarm and not committed to me and make peace with sin in your life. They have said I am only a God of grace and mercy. And though I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, I also take no pleasure in my people who honor me with their lips, but not with their hearts. Folks, this is the entire NAR movement. This is the, the seeker uh, movement where pastors will allow uh, homosexuals and openly uh, sinning fornicators and adulterers sit in the church in hopes that a little bit of Jesus will get on top of them and they'll become converted. That's what he's talking about. He is talking about a movement that he is part of. The seeker movement is, is, is joined at the hip with the NAR. The NAR will not preach on homosexuality. They will not preach on fornication. They will not preach on dr uh, being drunk. They will not preach on these things. It's all about prophecy and your destiny and how to activate the fivefold ministry. Listen, he's talking about himself, but he is trying to get you to believe he's not of that and he is separated from that. So you say, yeah, what about those guys? Knowing he's up to his eyeballs and his bank account is up to its eyeballs in NAR theology. This is, this is pitiful. For Christians who have known my holy presence and have been filled with my spirit, but have put no value on that privilege. I am 2018 beginning to root my presence from them. And I they will no longer even feel convicted for the ways that they go in that are no longer right. So I had to listen to this a number of times. I mean, literally like six or eight times. And what I'm gathering, he just said, was those people who have the Holy Spirit that didn't value having the Holy Spirit, he was going to withdraw from them so they wouldn't even be convicted of sin anymore. 
Well, folks, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be convicted of sin. I mean, the Holy Spirit can draw you and you can feel conviction. But if the Holy Spirit is totally gone from your, 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 your uh, if you have no communion and the Holy Spirit does not fill you, you are what's called a reprobate. So what he just said was that Holy Spirit-filled people who didn't appreciate the Spirit are now, in 2018, reprobate. And he is going to take his Spirit from anyone who didn't quote-unquote appreciate it. And there is no more lukewarm. There's no more lukewarm Christians. So I'm making this uh, video in 2021, in September. People, there are no more lukewarm Christians. It's, it's amazing. God just, God just did away with lukewarmness. Now, we don't see him doing that in the Bible. And these NRA apostles, quote-unquote apostles, love to add to the Bible and take away from the Bible as they see fit. But this doesn't make sense. No sense at all. That is an awesome claim. I, I, I know there's debate on could a reprobate turn around and then be saved again. I personally don't believe it. Uh, but I'm open to, you know, changing my mind if you can change it for me. This is, this is very troubling. What this also means is that in 2019, there are no more lukewarm Christians. I have never asked my children to be perfect just to be holy. Not to love the world or the things that are in the world, but to love me first. So I guess here he's preaching against Copeland and Duplantis and Parsley. Uh, maybe Baker, Creflo Dollar, I mean, those guys, Joel Osteen, those guys seem to love the world more than anything. I mean, good grief. If, if you didn't love the world, why would you have that much money? And we'll see later that there's a rub in what he's saying. When the lukewarm have sold their souls for in the church, I'm now going to take from them. I'm going to give it to my children who have lived for me at any cost. Uh, take what? The Lord's going to take what from who and give to who and why? Folks, this is not biblical. This is not biblical whatsoever. This goes against the Lord leaving the flock to get that one little lamb who's gone astray. This flies in the face of grace and mercy until Judgment Day. God has already judged the whole lukewarm population and found them not to be worthy, not to be that little lamb who Jesus is going to keep trying to get and train to follow his voice. This screams in the face of of long suffering that the Lord says he has. This is not this is not prophecy. Starting in the year 2018, I'm going to begin to remove many churches in this nation who have made my house a house of merchandise and have caused my presence to be hid from my sheep. For my house shall be called a house of prayer, says the Lord, and not a den of thieves. Now, surely someone out there in the year 2021 is going to say, oh, that happened. Yeah, yeah, COVID shut down a lot of churches. So, folks, y'all are going to tell me every single one of those churches were lukewarm churches, were bad churches, yet Copeland still keeps his kingdom, and Duplantis still kept his kingdom, and Jim Baker kept his kingdom, and Rod Parsley and Creflo Dollar, and all these other people kept their kingdom while God shut down all these other churches during COVID. Is that what you're going to try to tell me? This final move I am now releasing in the earth, says the Lord. It is not a move that's going to have mixture, but it will be a move of the pure presence of myself and of the Shekinah glory of God. There it is, folks. In 2018, we now have perfect church. All churches who remain after 2018 are now absolutely perfect without blemish because this man says in 2018 all that's going to be corrected. There are no more lukewarm churches. They are all perfect. 
Every single church is perfect, which means every Christian is perfect. Every preacher is perfect. Everything is now perfect. God has set up his reign, as we heard earlier in this video. He has taken the reins, and now everything is absolutely perfect. Because we all know that man's sin cannot exist in the presence of God. I am now releasing my glory and my presence in the earth because the harvest is now ready, says the Lord. And I have been waiting for laborers to put the harvest in. God's presence and glory has always been on earth. Otherwise, you wouldn't be saved. I now say unto the church that I have enough labor, says God, to bring the harvest into the house of the Lord. So in 2018, says the Lord, for many houses, your walls will have to be pushed out, saith God. For there's an army of men and women that are getting ready to come into the house of the Lord. And for those that are labor, saith God, your labor in my work has not been in vain. But the joy of the Lord shall be in thee as you walk, saith God, them come in. Not by the hundreds and not by the thousands, but by the millions they shall come into the United States of America. Folks, a million people did not come into America and enter the churches in 2018. And two other nations and my house shall again be called the house of prayer. People, if you look at statistical data, in 2018, Christianity did not grow by the millions. Statistical data proves Christianity is dwindling in the United States, not growing. It's not growing. People are not coming to the churches and to the Lord. They are leaving. This is not a prophet. This is not prophecy. This is the tickling of the ears that his people and NAR people like this love to hear. You know why? Because Finally, God is starting to move. We want God to move on our terms when we say we want Him to move and the way we want Him to move instead of just sitting back and riding the wave that God gave us. As I now begin to release my glory in the nation, there are going to be massive crowds and abundant supply of financial resources. Great signs and wonders shall not only be in my church, but they shall begin to be released in Congress and in government, saith God, and in places of leadership throughout the world. A great sign in Congress? in churches and throughout the world. Folks, this is prophet speak. Actually, it's false prophet speak. This could mean anything he wants it to mean. They could have a water main break in the Capitol building, and he would say, by goodness gracious, that was a sign from God. I told you it was going to happen. That's the way these people work. I have withheld signs and wonders and miracles because the counterfeit church has made a God out of them and sought them and counterfeited them and would not give me glory. Hey, uh, brother, sister Christian, if you got a miracle in 2018 or before, that was not of God because God has been withholding his miracles, signs, and wonders. None of that was from God. It was all counterfeit, according to this man. In 2018, there shall be a beginning of the greatest supernatural display of the glory of God that man has ever seen. You shall stand in amazement, saith God, and even the stories that have been told to you by another generation shall not be able to measure up to that that I am getting ready to release in my body of Christ for the glory of the Lord. For it is my honor, saith God, to display the muscle and the power of my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, what this man just prophesied for the year 2018 is you are going to see miracles and signs and wonders to display the muscle of God more than ever before, which means the creation of the universe was nothing compared to what you're going to see in 2018. The creation of man 
is nothing compared to what you're going to see in 2018. The splitting of the Red Sea, an axe head floating on water, and the coming of the Messiah is nothing compared to what you are going to see in the church in 2018. Are you kidding me? And though I have been limited, saith God, I am now no longer limited. But what, what, what is the limit that he's talking about? Sure, I know God puts rules on himself for our sake. But what, what is the limit that, that God has been under? What handcuffed God all these years so that now, in 2018, the handcuffs come off and here comes the Shekinah glory of God in every Christian church? Because you know there's no more lukewarm churches by this point, according to this man. Lukewarm churches are gone. It is a quote-unquote pure church the man said it so what what did how did god limit himself and handcuff himself so that now all of a sudden he 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 has no more limits what was that this man won't tell you for I have an army of believers who have risen up in faith and have declared our God can do anything. The days of the devil and his servants putting a muzzle on my people are over. He just said that God is removing the muzzle from the people. In 2018, the muzzle that Satan had put on the people has now been removed. Well, what happened in 2020? The churches were shut down. You had a couple that defied, absolutely. But the churches were muzzled. But he said in 2018 the muzzle was going to be removed. See, I have the luxury of going back in time and actually testing what he said against truth. And it doesn't match up. A true prophet, you can go back and look and he is going to hit 100% of the time when he opens his mouth and says, Thus saith the Lord, you can see that it happened. This man is not prophesying. He is not a prophet. He is disqualified. See, folks, one of the amazing things that happened during COVID is that God showed us all the false prophets in American churches because nobody saw COVID coming. I now say it the Lord that I'm going to put great men in places of tremendous influence in the nations. They will speak with such authority and power that the enemy will not be able to be challenged. Folks, did you hear what he just said? He said that men were going to be put in such influential places with such powerful speaking that the enemy would not be able to be challenged. Listen to it again. That the enemy will not be able to be challenged. That the enemy will not be able to be challenged. So one or two things happened here. Number one, he just showed you what side he's playing for. He says the enemy won't be able to be challenged. A little Freudian slip maybe. Or... This is not the perfect word from our Lord Jesus Christ, which means, again, he is disqualified. I mean, he says he's reading, but it sounds like he's preaching. 2018, saith God, will be known and remembered as a year of death in the United States for the wicked, who have been a mouthpiece for Satan and also for false prophets, hirelings and wolves in sheep's clothing and the lukewarm. So in 2018, all the false prophets die. In 2018, all the lukewarm Christians die. That is what this man just said. Did anyone observe that in 2018 at all? Anyone? No? Me neither. God says, I am physically going to remove men and women. And when you get up in the coming years, saith the Lord, you shall be amazed at the names that are going to begin to leave the earth that have tried to devour and detour the power and the glory of the Lord.
I'm going to replace him with men who have never been heard and women who have been silenced by the enemy. They shall stand and speak under the wisdom and the power of God. And even your news channel, saith the Lord, shall begin to give them coverage of what God is saying in this hour. Has anyone seen the news media give Christians even a fair shake, let alone men and women with the power of God being able to speak openly about God. Anyone seen this on the news media as this man predicted in 2018? Has anyone seen this happen? In 2018, though it will be a year of death for the wicked, God says it will be remembered as a year of rebirth and life for the righteousness. God says, I'm going to bankrupt sports. In the year of 2018, it shall be the beginning. God says, I'm coming against Hollywood. God says, I'm coming against the NFL. The NFL is going to start towards bankruptcy. All right, well, let's look at this first chart I found. NFL viewership has taken a hit. Let me explain something, folks. He must have made this video in 2017 if it's a prophecy for 2018. I think that's reasonable. Well, Statista, source ESPN.com, you'll see at the bottom of this chart, says that the downfall of the NFL started in 2015. There's nothing new about the NFL having financial trouble. Look at it right there from 2015 down to 2016, even farther down into 2017, 4.9 million uh, viewership rating. This was already viewable. It was already noticeable. Everybody knows the NFL was starting to mess up. They started to let politics get in. The prices were too high. Nobody wanted to uh, root for the home team anymore. It was a no-brainer. Of course they're going to go bankrupt, but they're not really going to go bankrupt. But he sees the trend. Now, let's look at this next chart. Here's another one. If you see in the bottom right-hand corner, Statista, I guess they're a statistical data company, average per game TV viewership of NFL games in the United States from 2010 to 2019. Look. From 2015, the bottom starts to fall out. 2016, it's a roller coaster ride downhill. 2017, I mean, this is really at the bottom, right? And then all of a sudden, bam! The prophet of God speaks and prophesies the NFL is going to go bankrupt. And then what happened in 2018? It rises. It didn't continue to fall after the prophet of God spoke the word from the Lord and then in 2019 it got even higher folks I'm not making this up this is not a prophet of God this is somebody who looks at statistics but he can't predict the future that's why I can look back and see the man was wrong see the man was lying see the man did not hear from God Wake up, people. Hey, listen, I am not a prophet. I have not heard from God. But I can see the writing on the wall, too. It's like a snake eating its own tail. The more the NFL lets political correctness in, the more that they let politics get in, the more that they stop putting a good product on the field by letting their people kneel down during the national anthem, of course they're going to start losing money. It's a viewable trend. They, he does not need the Lord to tell him this. Anyone can see this by pulling up a Google search. At the same time, saith the Lord, there's going to be a spirit of honor that's going to descend upon the house of God. And I'm going to redeem the integrity of my people and my ministry, saith the Lord. And in the house of God, it shall be known as a house of integrity, righteousness, and power by my spirit. And yet we have had an explosion of false prophets come up on YouTube who are now invited to churches to speak 
because they have a lot of followers, people who are seeking a sign, people who the Bible is not enough for them, people who a, a personal relationship with Jesus is not enough for them. They chase the prophets. They want to have their ears tickled, so they invite these false prophets, these false YouTube prophets, to their churches. And you're going to tell me that there's integrity in the church? Starting now and continuing to the year of 2018, I am going to answer long-term prayers of the righteous, both in the spirit and in the natural. For years, saith the Lord, my children have prayed to me, petitioned me, asked me, and commanded me. Yet I have been silent until they wondered, God, do you even hear us? So according to his statement, if you didn't get your prayer answered before 2018, you are not righteous. He said that he was going to answer the prayers of the righteous. So if your prayer didn't get answered, you're not righteous. I don't know how else to put it. You heard what the man said. Rewind it and see if I'm wrong. And what in the world is this about man commanding God to do anything? Who commands God to do something? What audacity? What? what uh, uh, this is beyond heresy. You think that you can command God to do something? Who are you? What, what did Job, what happened to Job when, when he even questioned God strongly, yet the, the saints have commanded God to do something? This is heresy. Yes, I have heard you, O righteous children. And not only am I going to answer your prayers in the spirit, there's going to be revival and glory and restoration. 2018 shall be a year of natural blessing upon the house of God. So this is very typical false prophet speak. This is made to rally the crowd. <clears throat> but let's look at what he actually said, okay? Here is a principle that false prophets cannot get around. Folks, if I tell you that the chair is red, but I've told you even more than that. I've told you the chair is red, but what I've also told you is the chair is not black, the chair is not white, the chair is not green or blue or any of that. So you, you're looking at what he says, but you're also not looking at what he's leaving out as being true. And that's what they can't get around. So when he says that God is going to answer the prayers of the righteous in 2018, what he is saying is, if your prayer didn't get answered, you're not righteous. This is, this is terrible, terrible theology. The Lord says moving companies are not going to have enough trucks to handle the amount that the righteous are going to move from one home to another. I'm going to take businesses, saith the Lord. I'm going to transfer their ownership and their deed. I'm going to give it to men that have struggled, but have tied, but have tied, but have tied. Here we go, folks. He just tied your blessing to the tithe. Okay, there is no biblical support in the New Testament for tithing. There are all kinds of videos that will show you there is no obligatory tithe in the New Testament. This was something that Abram did before he was Abraham. He did this. And he gave a tenth to Jeremiah of the spoils of war. So there is, and then after that, it was like 400 or something years before the law of tithing ever entered the Jewish law. Okay? Now, the New Testament does say to give, but you give what's laid on your heart to give. There is no tithe supported in the New Testament, but this man of God, under the influence of the office of prophet, the Lord said, you had trouble, but you tithed. So I'm going to give you businesses and deeds from other people. From other people. God is taking from the rich and giving to those who tithed. That is what this man just said. I'm going to command the enemy, saith the Lord, to release and restore all that he has stolen from the righteous men and women in the earth so that the word of the Lord shall be fulfilled that declares the wealth of the wicked. It's stored up for the righteous. So in 2018, if you did not get what the enemy had stolen from you, you weren't righteous. Remember the principle of the chair? He said in 2018, he is going to restore to the righteous what the enemy had stolen. So if you didn't get yours back in 2018, he's saying you are not righteous. 
He is speaking for God. He is not explaining anything about, well, maybe God has a reason why he's doing this and not giving you what the enemy has stolen from. You know, God does do things for a reason. But this man is saying it's because you weren't righteous. That's what's going on here, folks. So after this, um, he just did a lot of rallying the crowd, good time, candy-coated gospel type speaking about how everything is going to be great in 2018. Uh, but let's pick it up right here. For the favor of the Lord is now upon my people in the year 2018, saith the Lord. So having been a lawman for 20 years, I learned that you listen to what people are not saying. For instance, if a person says, I didn't burglarize that house, that doesn't mean they don't know who did. You have, to, you have to question him further. Here's what he just told you. He said that now in 2018 that the blessings of the Lord are going to be on the people. Is that to say that in 2017 they were not? And in 2016 and 2015? See, when he constructed his document that he says is from the Lord, he, didn't, he wasn't careful with the wording. If I tell you now in 2018 my blessings are going to be upon my people... Oh, well, what about the past? Were your blessings ever on the people? And if they weren't, what kind of God are you? This is ridiculous, people. This is what we call a clue. This man it did not hear from the Lord. This is not the way the Lord would operate. And though they reap the plagues of Egypt of the first few, God says, I declare that from this day on, I am setting, saith the Lord, a fence around godly families. And I make a commitment to you, says the Lord, and an oath that cancer shall not cross over, death shall not cross over, disease shall not cross over, and the devourer shall not cross over. For there is favor upon the righteous in the year of 2018. Folks, when I heard him say this, I had to literally get up from my chair, stop editing this video, because I don't, I don't rehearse this. I, I tell you as I feel it, as he's preaching it. Um, I had to get up from my chair, put it on pause, get up. And walk away for a minute. Let me tell you what this man just told you. He said that in the year 2018, God was going to build a fence around godly families. And that he would make a commitment, yea, take an oath. God is going to make a commitment and take an oath that no cancer can cross that fence, no death can cross that fence, no disease could cross that fence, no devourer could cross that fence. Because favor is now on the righteous in 2018. So if you got cancer or you know someone who got cancer, if death came near your family or into your family, if someone got diseased, if the devourer came, you were not righteous in 2018. How in the world does this man have any Christian with discernment following him? My word is going to be fulfilled because I do not lie. So now that he's whipped the crowd into a frenzy, he's actually lying because he says that the Lord through him says, I do not lie and my word will not come back void. But are you going to tell me that all that we've talked about, how he says, if you are righteous, this will happen. If you are righteous, this will happen. You're going to tell me that that only happened to righteous people. And that righteous people didn't suffer in 2018. He's not talked about any suffering in 2018 by the righteous. And the Bible says, if you're going to serve the Lord, you're going to suffer some, some, some troubles. But not in 2018, not according to this man. According to this man, everything will be Purpose. The last move of the Lord will never be to the lukewarm. It will be to the unsaved and it will be to the right. Okay, folks, so remember, we are reviewing this in September of 2021. This man wants you to believe that in 2018, the Lord Jesus Christ, God himself, did away with the lukewarm. That's what he said. The last move of God will be on the lost and the righteous. There is no in-between anymore. God took lukewarm out of the equation. So now, anywhere you read the Bible, 
where it says anything about lukewarm, it should have disappeared out of the Bible. See, he's an apostle. He can take stuff out of the Bible and put it back in the Bible or take church doctrine and change it because he's an apostle. He's a prophet. You see how silly this is. He has changed the word of God by saying in 2018, there are no longer lukewarm. They're either saved or they're lost. Just, uh, and God says, I am withdrawing my conviction for those uh, that have heard me and I pleaded with them that did not come. Uh, God says, uh, you say there's time. Uh, I say there is no time uh, for the lukewarm. Uh, there is for the righteous and there is the, uh, the unsaved. Uh, God says, there is a wind of rest that I'm beginning to blow. And I am blowing rest upon the lives of you faithful men and women that have been so depleted from the battle. So according to this prophet in 2018, God began to blow rest upon the righteous. Yeah, and then COVID hit in December 2019. How many of you good Christian righteous people got rest after COVID came? See, one of the things COVID did was exposed all these false prophets to anyone who is willing to listen and, and stop defending them because they like them. Know this, saith the Lord. There has been a voice of evil that has spoken in this nation. God says, I'm going to muzzle that voice and there's going to be a voice of righteousness loose. Hey folks, did anybody see the voice of evil get muzzled in 2018? The whole year, 2018, the Gregorian, Gregorian calendar of 2018 did anyone see the voice of evil get muzzled or did you see the democrats take more seats in the house you think that's muzzled is that what you really think the definition of muzzled is no it got worse if you saw any voice of evil that was not muzzled this man is a false prophet. Because God said, I'm lifting up men that I'm going to confirm, says the Lord, that it's not the days of preaching anymore. It is the day of demonstration. And though there will be preaching in the house, God said it will not have the preeminence that it's had, but God said the greatest preaching is going to come forth. There's going to be a confirming of the word with signs and wonders following. And there you have it, folks. The new apostolic reformation doctrine. It's no longer about preaching. I dare say it's no longer about the gospel, the preaching of the gospel. But it's about signs and it's about wonders. And you know what the Word of God says about the generation that seeks after a sign? That's where we are. That's who this man is. That is what he is telling you. He is a propaganda mouthpiece for the NAR, and he's telling you, don't worry about the preaching, look for the signs, look for the wonders. Let me jingle this in front of you and you bite on it like a fish. You know what happens to the fish that bites on something shiny? He normally gets hooked. The Lord says it's gonna even be on little children that I'm going to hit classrooms. I am invading the school system of the United States of America. Hey folks, this is what we have in the United States school system in America. And these lies, saith the Lord, uh, that have infiltrated uh, and have been taught. Uh, God said, I'm going to remove professors and teachers uh, that have taught children that, that which is not true. And because they've stood in my classroom and taught this generation what is not true, God said, I am releasing a righteous sound. The Lord also says, the flag of this nation shall not fall to the ground in infancy and embarrassment. But the Lord said, I'm raising it back up. See, people, the NAR movement believes everything is going to be peachy keen in the end times before Jesus comes. But as we see, uh, they've not read the Bible and do not realize it's all going to go downhill. And as you've honored the flag, saith the Lord, thou hast honored me. And know this, saith God, I breathe on you. I breathe on you life. I breathe on you joy. I breathe on you peace. And may the God of peace be upon thee. My children, may you receive my word today, saith the Lord. So there you have it, folks. 2018, according to the 
prophet Kent Christmas. Uh, I hope that you can see this man is not a prophet of God. Now, I, I've, I've just not really researched him at all. This is the first video I saw. I don't know if there's a 2019. I know there's a 2020. And once I saw 2018, I just went ahead and downloaded 2020 so I could look at it. Uh, this is this is pitiful. It is pitiful that the church of our Lord Jesus Christ falls for this kind of nonsense. They have no discernment. They do not care that the man has said things that is so far out of the Bible and didn't come to pass. You know what they'll do? They'll write him a check. Because he speaks nice, soft things. He doesn't say, hey, there's coming a time when you're about to lose your house because of this virus. Didn't see that coming. No, sir, COVID did a lot more than just kill people. It exposed the false prophets. This one and others. People still writing Kenneth Copeland checks after all his nonsense with COVID. Binding COVID. You can bind whatever you want. That don't mean it's bound in heaven. Try to figure out what that scripture really means. So, folks, Kent Christmas is a false prophet. That's just the way I see it. I'm out of here. I got to go find an aspirin. Thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman. And be on the lookout for more videos about Kent Christmas.